to the way, woman. They shouldn't allow you out in public, you women. No, no, no. This court is now convened. Uh, myself, the Bailey for Dice, magistrate and judge, a counsel for the defence, Sir uh, James Davidson, the jailer of Thomas Cruikshank, three female witnesses, and the accused, Peter Williamson. All have already been sworn in to save time, so they have other more important duties to attend. So let us now proceed. Uh, firstly, I would advise you, the members of the Assize, to pay close and careful heed to all that is said here today. For you will be required to give your verdict at the end of the proceedings. Peter Williamson, stand forward. Peter Williamson, you are accused of writing a publication which you entitled uh, The Life and Curious Adventures of Peter Williamson, who was carried off from Aberdeen and sold for a slave, published in the city of York in 1757, and of setting up a stall and attempting to sell at the Market Cross here in Aberdeen the said publication, containing scurrilous and infamous libel which greatly reflected upon the characters and reputations of certain magistrates and merchants of Aberdeen. This court has had to be hastily convened since you are taken in the act of selling the said publication, and the matter being of extreme urgency had to be dealt with forthwith. Every word of my publication is true. Truth cannot be libel. Be silent! You have identified yourself as the accused. You will be given opportunity to defend yourself in due course and with the brevity. But for now, stand back. Oh, James Davidson, you may call forth your witnesses. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Annie Morrison and Margaret Ross, please stand forward. Mm. Now, you both lost sons and believe them abducted and sent to Virginia. Not only do I believe it, I ken it. It's many years now since my youngest son, James Ingram, gave missing. I, and for the third and final time, I found him, rescued him, and taken him home twice before the black guards got him and held him in the toll booth. Saying, so shipped him away out of the country all together to Maryland, I heard. Never a day passes that I haven't thought to pray through. I wish I could see his impudent grin as he gangs run into my arms to tell me any of his made wooden tales. Oh, even after all these years, if I see a red curly heat in the market could I get running like a field, I get somewhere or another he'd find his way back here again. Oh, I can't even talk him when I go for that table. Even although I think proof of it would bail him, I'd just have wild with a hit. Aye. Brave door laddies have been near men, drawn by new, if God willing that he survived their ordeal. Uh, you may both tell the court what you know of their disappearance. And make it as brief as you can, mistresses. Uh, we've already seen that Mistress Ross here is prone like many women to fanciful and unnecessary elaborations. But we have a lot to listen to in this trial today, and we don't want to spend all our time listening to emotional ramblings. <laughs> Give us all the facts that you know them. And you first, Mrs. Ross. And what proof do you have that your son was abducted and to who was involved? As well as my son James's ain't a of what happened to him the first twa times we've seen, and as to why I was the white wit, my husband went to a great deal of trouble and expense we could ill afford, collecting a mountain of evidence against Thomas Cruikshank, Janet Brun, and many of the other men who stand in this tomb. He tried his best to get, take action against the perpetrators, but he couldn't get a lawyer to tack the case on. Muffle whiz, and still is the poor of the magistrates and merchants, Oak Baileys and Burgesses. He weren't allowed to get justice. Let any liar among you be willing to help us, and we still hear that evidence. It's there. Waiting to be presented to any honest court. Oh. Uh, thank you, Mistress. And you, uh, Mistress Morrison, what evidence do you have of the magistrate's involvement? Uh, I'd just like to say, Mr. Davidson, that Margaret and me are grateful to yourself for this chance to give you evidence. We had come here looking for you to help us a, a few times in past years, as we came to be an honest and God fearing man. It's time somebody spoke it against this rotten trade in young lives that your respected counsel has been plying for years. Robbie was the only son my aunt.
found this in me at length, after we lost the other twice with evil. And I sair lost the word to you, but we could grieve our dear loss, lay them to rest, and find comfort in the bairns we had left. The Rabbi's disappearance is a, a muckle way to bear, wondering if he's still alive and well, trying to picture that he'd look like all the years he's been gone. Blaming ourselves for fit happened. Yes, yes, but enough of these sentimental haverings. Get on with your evidence. You high and mighty counselor think <laughs> peer folk in a feelings. Think we wouldn't miss a bear the most of money of their moves to feed. I've heard some of them say as muckle. How little they can. Nothing is as bad as the loss of a bear. Counselors. The wreck nest of vipers! Ooh. Your evidence, Mistress Morrison! Have it. I'll tell you what I have seen when my aim in. Yon Jailer Cruikshank, escorting young laddies to God King's Bar. He was I or crafty for me to follow him in LY, but I hate on great authority that him and Yon all bism over there. Oh. Look at them up! To see how they were teen a lot of the colonies! Hi, and my only son was in other victim, I'm sure of it. It's near. I've seen Yon Bailey with there in conversation with Thomas Cruikshank and Janet Brew oh. doing in the green. Aye, and in one of our places through the tune tea, I can or up to the gween. Oh, but these are unsubstantiated and fantastical ramblings, Mistress Morrison. Now, uh, Mistress Ross, you say that you have a Mountain of evidence. Well, tell me from whence did this mountain derive? I he already tell you, sir. My husband spent time and summer collecting evidence for a great money that you would call very reliable sources. Hmm. And I have heard from even more reliable sources that your husband's evidence was collected from common ruffians and thieves oh. who would say anything for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. oh. That's the reason that your husband was not allowed to bring the action. But no respectable lawyer would undertake it. Your rhymes are apparent in mere wise than in peer we met be, but there are mere wretches, honourable souls in our streets than ye he has in other councils that ever were. And ye yourself wrecked up there about them. And there's only justice left in this suit when it be deep this day. No, Wretch! <laughs> Your evidence is discredited and discounted. The court will ignore oh! all of Margaret Ross's entire testimony. I would remind the magistrate that the defense testimony should not be ignored if justice is to be done. And I would remind you, sir, who is in charge of these proceedings. Nevertheless, sir, I insist we hear what Annie Morrison saw concerning Janet Brown and Thomas Cruikshank. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. You'd like to get me a fluffered up and they stick to my story. But I came for I have seen him trailing a lamb up here we loon by the scrap of a neck. Aye, and jumping a wop and he's sitting a watching him. He was backing that laddie by force. I can he was. As for yourself, the jailer and Janet Broom. I can't you up to make a weed all the times I've been there together. You look at me shifty than you usually do, and that's shifty in you. 